live from Toronto, Canada, it's theCUBE, covering Blockchain Futurist Conference 2018. Brought to you by theCUBE. Hello everyone, welcome back to live coverage, day two of theCUBE here in Toronto, Ontario in Canada for the Untraceable Blockchain Futures Conference. Uh, Multi-wall coverage, day two, a lot of action going on, tons of great content, tons of great after-hour networking, just overall great vibe. In light of the market, crashing, Bitcoin stabilizing, some altcoins getting crushed. We're getting it all cut for you here. I'm John Furrier, your host of theCUBE, and our next guest is Nathan Ethan, who's the Chief Investment Officer of Arcadia Crypto Advisors. Uh, Ventures, Arcadia Crypto Ventures, welcome to theCUBE, good to see you. Hey, good to see you too, John, thank you Cube for having me here. CUBE alumni, in the know. Okay, so first of all, you're uh, an investor in, in crypto, everyone's running for the hills, a dip is happening, a crash, as some say. Um, your perspective, what's happening in the market? See, happening in the market, uh, so typically, uh, just like in any, any asset class, there's a, there was a huge run up that happened very quickly. It didn't, it didn't go up slow, all right? And uh, so the geeks were in early, the libertarians came in after that, uh, then there were speculators, and the retail market also came in, and they all came in together, let's say in the December, after the November Thanksgiving weekend, everybody learned about cryptos, they came in. All right, the next set of guys haven't come in, all right? So there's no, nothing to hold them there, nobody's holding them there. And they were expecting the institutional investors to come in, and that hasn't happened due to custody problems, ETF problems, and all that stuff. All right, it started going down. The weak hands are folding. The weak hands are keeping on folding. And as with any technology, any bubble, people have come in. Now they feel that okay, the world is coming to an end, and they are uh, selling all their stuff. Yeah. All the ICOs that have raised money in ether, selling the ether. Yeah. All this together is pushing it down, and uh, everybody's waiting for that. The next set of investors or the Every 10x an, in, uh, an asset goes up, there's a new set of guys who are supposed to come in, yeah. and this time it hasn't come in, and we're waiting for that. You were on a panel here at the events on a lot of different panels, but one panel I watched, you were on, you talked about you know, the token model, how people were holding ether. Uh, there was kind of a debate, you know, and Bradley Rotter and another investor was saying, hey, too many tokens out there. Um, you had a different perspective, but one of the things I want to get your reaction to is that people who held on to the ether uh -huh. lost their runway, and that's, yeah. that creates a, a, a harder, harder road to hoe. So people were converting to fiat. This is a big issue. How, um, how are we going to get by this? Just hold on to the ether, more people going to come in. Right. The dynamics of investing in this token model, has it changed? How are you looking at it? And obviously, how are you going to help startups? Okay. So regarding uh, a lot of tokens, first thing is there are a lot of tokens out there. See, that is going to happen. It's, it's like in the 1999, okay? A lot of websites and a lot of internet companies, pet.com, everybody is an internet company. Same way, everybody is a token. 95 to 99% of them are going to go away, and the, and the good ones will rise from those ashes, okay? Now, regarding runway, a lot of these projects have pretty much raised enough money for 50 years of runway, okay? So it has crashed to one-fifth, okay, they have 10 years worth of runway. Typically in the olden days, a small company with an idea or an MVP was max going to raise one million to two or three million, right? Yeah. And all of them anyway have that, even after Ether has crashed. I'm saying, just don't panic, okay? Yeah. You still have 10 years worth of runway. Utilize that, build a product, because the hype period may be over where you can just raise money on uh, a white paper. Uh, you got the money, build your stuff. You promised all your investors, I'm going to build this great thing. So this is where we're going to see the great founders to the average and the bad ones where they've hit a wall, they don't know what to do, yeah. they'll fold their hands and walk away. Really good founders, they're resilient. They will, uh, no matter how hard they're pushed to the wall, they're going to come up with the product, you see, and they're going to uh, try to meet customer demands, they're going to yeah. get into that feedback loop, check what the customer wants, yeah. and start delivering. So basically what you're saying is there's so much money being raised, I mean, and I agree with you by the way, if you go the classic venture capital route, if you had a, um, a PowerPoint or a prototype or even some working product with recurring revenue, you know, your Series A preferred stock financing will be anywhere from you know, three to 15 million. Oh my God, yeah. So, and that's high end. That's 15, a high end. 15 million would be on the high end. That's a high ICOs end. are raising 50 million, in some cases 70 plus million. So even if you cut that in half, it's still a better outcome <laughs> on the front first round. So that's, I, I agree with that. So I think that's interesting. The other one that you mentioned is uh, that I think is a dynamic that we're seeing here at the show is 
in the hallways. Everybody's talking about flight to quality. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was talking yesterday on the wrap up with Dave Vellante that you can tell the good deals from the bad deals by, is the venture architecture working for the coin or is the coin working for the venture architecture? And so this flight to quality combined with how people are optimizing their build out mm -hmm. is critical. Yes. Um, talk about some, some things that you're seeing with, with this flight to quality. Is there anything in particular? Is it blockchain? Is it token economics? Where's the quality deals uh, from your perspective? See, I, I, I feel quality lies in the founder always, okay? The founding team, because the idea really, you know, if you, if, if you really ask me, what is an idea? Ideas are just like mental masturbation. Guys who sit there can, <laughs> you can come up with so many ideas, right? <laughs> That's what ideas yeah, are, yeah. okay? Now taking these ideas to fruition, like building it, there's, there's, there's a capital raising part, yeah. okay? Now a lot of people are good at capital raising, they're raising money, and a lot of capital yeah. coming in. That's awesome, because you need capital to attract talent to the space, because a lot of talent who are maybe in, maybe in uh, astrophysics or in mechanical engineering, you want that talent to yeah. come here and, and come with ideas and build the stuff. Okay, the capital has come in. Now once the capital has come in, you really have to build the stuff. Even after you build the stuff, you have to go find the customer, right? You, you have to go and acquire customers. And all these three things coming together are so hard in, in reality. And that's why the venture capital always gave a little bit of money to make sure that these guys are not wasting the whole thing yeah. away, right? Well, the other thing I want to get in touch, um, get, get on with you is here is that in the old days, Silicon Valley, you got the move there, the VCs were there. Now we're talking about a global phenomenon and the capital formation is both inside the United States and outside the United States. And certainly inside the United States, you're starting to see the formation around traditional structures, security token, which is more like, it feels like a security, a more preferred financing model, equities now involved. Outside the United States, a booming utility token market. Your thoughts on how that's uh, progressing, still open, still crazy, what's your thoughts? So the, uh, the capital model, the, the beauty that has happened today is, earlier you had to pitch to 200 VCs or 300 VCs to get one guy to put money into it. Most of the time, they would be wasting your time, all right? So you had to go to them and to get a million. And, and you didn't have any other option. You couldn't get it from a small uh, enthusiast of your project to put, give you 500 bucks or 1,000 bucks. So now you have that option, okay. Now that option is being cut by regulation by the SEC and people like that come in saying, oh, you can't do that, it has to be a security token. All right, let's make it a security token. The, the moment you make it a security token, my, my question is, can you raise money from outside? Are, are you stopping that? Then again, it doesn't really make sense. You're cutting the small investor away, the chance for him to buy into a Google, okay? Uh, it, it was only the VCs like Sequoia or somebody like that who could access a deal like Google. Now you have a chance for something like Google to come out with uh, the, the common man who's putting 500, like Ethereum. Yeah. There was no venture capitalist or Wall Streeter who got involved in Ethereum. The real money was made by very common people yeah. who supported a decentralized world computer. Well, we're seeing VCs get in now. Mark Andreessen, when Andreessen Horowitz yeah. is getting involved, you're starting to see VCs dabble in there. Has that changed the investment dynamic at well, all? It has, because the VCs, they, they have this feeling they missed out, right? So now they're putting five and $10 million into a project, valuing a project at 300 million. Uh, it, it, it changes the dynamics because now all these guys, like uh, there are so many projects that are raising like 100 million, okay? Because the VCs or these private investors are giving 10, 15, 20 million. Like Andreessen, for example, they've raised a $300 million fund they, they can't invest 10,000 to 50,000 50, to 100,000, right? They have to push 10 million to manage the money. That is queuing stuff. And I, I personally am not very interested in those kind of projects because it's without a community power at that time. So I, I don't know how the token economics is going to be fruitful for the second investor, the third investor. And Block Tower, we found out yesterday, is also investing and putting a fund together, a venture fund. It's interesting. We'll see how that shakes out. I wonder if it's going to change the dynamics. You mentioned community, obviously, a big part of that. Um, big community here at the Futurist event in Toronto, so they got a Canadian culture here, a lot of Ethereum um, DNA in this area. What are you hearing at this event? What are some of the things that you're hearing in the hallways? Obviously you've been on some panels at this event um, and you, you're, you're highly networked. What are you hearing? What's, uh, what, your ears to the ground, sure. what's it telling you? All right. Uh, you were talking about Block Tower and Ari Paul. Yes, they, they are doing a venture fund and it's, it's great. He's a, he's a very, very smart investor and, um, and they, they, they're doing, going to do very well. Uh, on the ground, so most of the questions right now are coming. So we've reached a point that, okay, we have block, the blockchains or the Bitcoins. We want it to be faster, all right? Everybody's looking for scalability. Who can bring scalability? 
the EOS guys are out there. Uh, they are saying they can do, you know, what, 5,000 or 10,000, 100,000 transactions per second. Uh, so scalability is a very, very big thing. I personally consider something like interoperability bigger. Interoperability in the sense, all right, so now you have these multiple chains. It's it just like uh, multiple types of phones. Now imagine you had an at and phone and you couldn't call the Verizon customer, all right? We are at that point. We have all these chains. There's Ethereum, there's one chain, there's EOS. Okay, I build, let's say, a distributed app. Let's say it's a poker app on Ethereum. But I can't play with the guy who is on EOS, right? What if he also wants to play poker and there's a poker app? Is there some way we can make this integrated and interoperable? Now to make it interoperable, now we have if you go into details, there are assets, there are tokens on both seat sides. How can we transfer tokens from one chain to the other chain, making sure there's no double yeah. spend happening? I mean, there's two things. Obviously, consumability, making it easy to use, one. And two, mm -hmm. I think you're right on. Interoperability is huge. You got to have that. Oh, Otherwise, interfaces, as you said. Interfaces is big. To make it simple, it's still the geeks, <laughs> yeah. geeks area. A lot of people are using command line prompts. You can't expect the common man sitting at home. Yeah. It's just like email. Email was there from 1978. It's yeah. only when all these tools, like it became 94, and the browser came in that people started using it. So those things have to come in. A lot of work's got to get done, certainly on the blockchain side. Um, well, great to have you on, good to see you. Congratulations on uh, your panels and just stuff you're doing here. Good stuff, good job, thanks for coming on, appreciate Thank it. Thank you so much, John. Any predictions, by the way? You want to do a leave Predictions? Any? Yeah, uh, any, any predictions, any? I don't know, I'm not a predictions guy. I just go with the market. Price of Bitcoin, 20,000? Oh, no, I never get into those predictions. <laughs> I don't want to get it. Uh, I, I think uh, that, that it's a possible that the bear market can continue for a longer time based on the fact that the newer money cannot come in. It has happened before. Bitcoin has fallen so many times at the 70, 80% range, and then it stayed stagnant for a year before the next run-up came. Yeah, and it's certainly, we, uh, we're full of shops, and we're long. Yeah. Nathan, thanks for coming on. This is Cube coverage here live in Toronto, Ontario. Cube coverage with the Untraceables Blockchain Futurist Conference here, two days, day two, Cube coverage. We'll be back after this short break. Thanks for watching. Thank you